The Pixel tablet itself is okay, but the speaker dock that it's bundled with is very disappointing. Let's talk about it. The Pixel tablet is an interesting device made by Google. It's a pretty budget, maybe mid-range Android tablet, and this isn't really new since Google has made other Android tablets before, but its standout feature is that it's bundled with a speaker charging dock. By the way, if you're new here, welcome to Carry On Accessibility, where I talk about tech and accessibility. There's a lot of great videos out there talking about the Pixel tablet, its specifications and design, but in this video, I want to focus on the tablet from an accessibility point of view and my experience as somebody who is visually impaired and uses a screen magnifier and screen reader. I'll talk about the tablet itself more a little bit later but I really want to talk about this dock first. You can magnetically attach the tablet to the dock where it can charge and it has a speaker. The magnets are pretty strong and it's pretty easy to learn the position to attach the tablet even non-visually, though I will mention it does take a little bit longer to figure out how to do it one-handed without banging it on the desk or whatever surface you have it on. I love this idea. At their developer conference, Google made a great point when they said that tablets mostly stay at home in some random spot or drawer and mostly don't have battery when you actually want to go and use them. It's a great idea, but the execution, I feel, is a bit lacking. Transitioning from the tablet speaker to the speaker on the dock is fast and it's really seamless actually. You don't have to do anything, you just magnetically attach it and it just transfers over the audio. First up is a new iPhone app called From Your Eyes. The way it works is a user can either take a photo or upload an image and the send it to AI and the, the AI dock. will send the user a draft visual the description. Dock. If there's a problem with the Sure, the I'm not an audiophile by any means, but even for me, it's really just not great. It does add a little bit of bass, but not much volume. It also just sounds kind of muddy. When I use a screen reader or listen to an audiobook, I don't like using the dock. It's got too much bass for me and the voice clarity suffers. I guess it's not too bad when it comes to music though, as long as you're not too picky. I really can't tell between different bit rates and hertz and whatever audio enthusiasts really like, but even I can tell that this is not a great speaker. Google sells this dock for 129 if you want to have maybe extra speaker charging stations around the house, if anybody wants that. However, the speaker has no built-in battery. You have to have it plugged in all the time. It does put the tablet at a really great angle for me as a person who's visually impaired and needs to look at things closely and uses magnification. It's like a tablet stand. And I found myself carrying the tablet around the house on the dock but not plugged in because I didn't want to be tethered to an outlet. It feels kind of silly just using the dock as a stand. I could easily just use a 20 or $30 one from Amazon and it would have been the same functionality, maybe more because at least on the stands I can adjust it. But if I could walk around with the speaker stand combo, that would be pretty cool. On the flip side, the dock is pretty useless if the tablet is not connected. It's just this not so pretty decoration on the desk or counter that's just always there. Why couldn't it act like a Google Home Nest Mini when the tablet wasn't attached? For $129, you could buy two Home Nest Minis and the speaker wouldn't be a huge downgrade. You'd probably have enough left over to also get a wireless charger too. What about the tablet though? Does it work well for somebody with low vision or somebody that uses a screen reader? Well, I do find it a lot better than the dock. By the way, I did an unboxing. If you want to check that out, I'll put that in the cards and in the description too. Something I really like about the Pixel tablet is that it has a fingerprint scanner on the lock wake button, which is definitely a great thing. It's much better than having an under the screen sensor. That was a constant frustration for me on my Samsung Tab S8 Plus. I ended up just turning it off for that device because I really had a hard time finding the right spot to put my finger. It's already enough of a challenge to do that on the phone, but 
on a big screen tablet? <laughs> no, thank you. Having the fingerprint sensor on that lock button was just really nice, and I think it was a great decision. Good job, Google. Now, can we please continue that trend on any other tablets and maybe on your phones too, please? The Pixel tablet has an 11 inch IPS LCD screen and the resolution is 1600 by 2560, which is perfectly fine for me, but it's seriously disappointing that it doesn't have an OLED screen or that they don't have an OLED version of the tablet. That's just so much easier to see for somebody who has low vision and looks at screens really closely. When something's supposed to be black on the screen, let's say a background in dark mode, I want it to be really black instead of the grayish color that it turns into when it has an LCD backlight. OLED screens are just far better for contrast. The Pixel tablet has a 60 hertz refresh rate. Maybe I'm just really too blind to see it, but I can't personally tell a difference between 30, 60, 90 or 120 hertz screens. Can any other low vision users out there tell the difference? Maybe? What I think matters more is the 500 nits of brightness, which I find enough for inside, but definitely not bright enough for outside in the sun. The font size and display size can be adjusted to be pretty large. I think it's really comparable to my Samsung tablet, especially when Android 14 comes out with even larger fonts. One issue I have with Android tablets and iPads for that matter is Ooh, tablet optimization. So many tech tubers out there are celebrating Google's new focus on tablet apps and making things look better for tablets. That usually means adding columns or a sidebar and like a left portion of the app and a right portion of the app. For example, in settings, there's a, a left menu and then the right side has more, more options. In Gmail, you have your inbox on the left and then you have the, the message of the email on the right side. Everybody was really happy about Google's weather app because it's optimized for the Pixel tablet. But you know what I was thinking every time I would hear somebody talk about this? In my mind, I would be like saying, I really love that the apps are basically large phone apps. I love that it just stretched it out and I love putting it on portrait and it just really feels like a huge Android phone. Just look at my YouTube studio. It's huge, which is so great. I really don't want them to continue making tablet optimized apps. It's just really so much easier when it's basically the phone app, just much larger. Either that or I want a setting that when my display size and font size are at a certain level, it just removes the tablet interface and just acts like a phone. This is really, really needed on a tablet. Give me huge, give me the huge phone app experience. That's what I want on a large screen. Just, just give me that. <laughs> this needs to be an accessibility setting right now. At least on my Samsung tablet, when I have the screen zoom up to max, it does act usually like a phone screen, which, which is just great. I love it. Along the same lines, the Pixel tablet launcher doesn't let me have less icons on the screen, which would make it bigger, like how we can do this on the Pixel phones. On my son's Pixel 6a, I have the app grid set to 3x3, and this makes the icon and the text just so much bigger and easier to read and see. But there aren't any not any app grid settings you can change on the Pixel tablet. At least it's still an Android tablet and I can get an alternative home screen launcher if I wanted to. For the most part, I think tablet works all right for me in my experience. It's not a high-end tablet or Android device, so it does run a bit slower, I feel, in my experience for context. I'm also using the triple tap magnification that usually causes more lag, but I don't know if it's more than usual or if it's talkback that's actually slow. It just maybe the processor just can't handle all the different accessibility settings and features and resource intensive apps at the same time. I think the experience on my Samsung tablet with talkback is is a bit faster. But other than that, it was generally fine. I didn't really have any problems swiping or double tapping or exploring the screen. 
it it was okay however i did not like to leave talk back on when i'm not using the tablet this is because of notifications i get it on my phone and then i get it on my tablet and talk back is talking even though the screen is off and i'm just like why why are you telling me i'm not using the tablet right now i'm getting it on my phone i don't want all my devices to be telling me all these notifications all at the same time that is just unnecessary i don't know if there's already a setting but if there's not google needs to come up with a setting where we just get notifications on the device that we're using i feel like my experience was pretty similar to john from blind android users podcast when it comes to the pixel tablet and if you haven't yet go check out the blind android users podcast because they have some pretty great stuff over there too Something that I forgot to mention is the fact that the Pixel tablet does not have haptic feedback. And in the beginning, it didn't really bother me all that much, but mm, the more I used it, the more I wished that it had some type of vibration. I didn't really use hub mode because I much preferred just setting the tablet on the, the dock and using it still as a tablet. But I did use Google Assistant and I mean, it. I think it worked as well as Google Assistant usually does. I think there has been some improvement of Google figuring out which device you're speaking to when you say, okay, Google. It's still not perfect, but I feel like even though I have my phone and uh, my tablet and another Samsung tablet, not everything answered all the time. So I would call that an improvement. Adding multiple users is also pretty easy on the device. I was able to set up my son's account and turn on TalkBack, and it's really easy to switch back and forth, and that was pretty nice. I also really like the very large pin numbers. That That's pretty cool. But I much prefer using the fingerprint scanner. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that at the bottom of the tablet, on the bottom edge, they have these little rubber strips. So if you put it down on a counter and lean it against the wall, it actually stays put, which is a nice little touch. I feel that the tablet is a pretty average, run-of-the-mill Android tablet. It's a Pixel one, so it has the Google Pixel-y stuff. And the price is certainly nicer, but I don't know. I wish that they could either sell this tablet without the dock for a lot cheaper or improve the speaker dock. I would really prefer improvements to the speaker dock without increasing price. <laughs> I don't know if they could do that, but that would be really nice. Just improve the sound quality of the speaker and for goodness sake, just put a battery in there. Just put a battery in there. Let me walk around with my tablet and the speaker dock around the house. Is that so hard? I wish they could just sell the tablet by itself, maybe for $3.99. That would be, that would be great. Another thing is the way you plug in the speaker dock, it's got its own round plug. And then the part where you plug into an outlet, it doesn't have a place where you can switch that and attach it to maybe a battery charger because it doesn't have a USB plug. The wire just goes straight to the, the outlet plug. I love the idea of the speaker charging dock and I would love Samsung to come out with an OLED one and a dock that has a battery. Oh my goodness, I just hope that it doesn't have Bixby. <laughs> Please don't put Bixby on it. <laughs> so that was the Pixel tablet. I am much more excited about the Pixel Fold. I'm really excited to see what Google came up with with a folding phone. It's also going to be my first folding phone. Samsung Unpacked is coming up in the end of July, I think. And so I'm hoping to also get a Z Fold 4. No, Z Fold 5. We'll just have to see the difference between the Pixel Fold and the Samsung Z Fold 5. What do you think about this tablet? Or if you want to share your ideas about foldables, let me know down in the comments. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.